As friends and collaborators, Ice Cube and Cypress Hill served as an example of West Coast unity in the 90s. I always was down with him, you know, and he was always one of my favorites. And I said, you know, if, if I'm going to build my name, I want, I want people to, you know, look at me like they look at him or like they look at KRS-One. The controversy started when Ice Cube right. went to the studio to pick up Roll It Up, Light It Up, Smoke It Up, a Cypress Hill song for the Friday movie soundtrack. You know, we play him the song and he likes it. He goes, yeah, that's perfect, you know. We, you know, me and Muggs ask him, hey, man, you know, we got a couple of tracks from the album. You want to hear it? We played him a song called Throw Your Set in the Air. And he was like, oh, that's banging. That shit is banging. Can, uh, can I get that for the movie instead? They're like, man, we'd love to give it to you, but, you know, this is, this is going to be the single on our album. He said, all right, cool. So he said, can I hear it again? So we played it again for him. We played it for him a couple of times over because he wanted to hear it again. You know, it was kind of like half-assed listen to him, half-assed talk. The Friday soundtrack was released just before Cypress Hill's album, Temples of Boom. A friend of B. Reels heard it and called him. He says, hey man, uh, did you give Cube uh, the song from your record for, for the Friday thing? Like, yeah, the, 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 the Get High song? Yeah, we gave that up already. Why? Says, no, 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 no. The throw your set in the air thing. I said, no, nah, we didn't give him that. He goes, well, you know, that shit is in his chorus in his song. So we're like, nah, you're crazy. Finally, I hear it, and sure enough, there it is. You know, the same. It's like some of the words are changed around, but for the most part, the chorus is the same. We was thrown back, like, what? Three months later, I go to South Africa to do my movie. Mac 10 called me and said, Cypress Hill is on the radio dissing. I said, what? He calls me, asks me if, you know, why why we're dissing him. And I said, hey, man, you know, the guys feel like you snatched up the song. It was a misunderstanding where they thought that I took one of their hooks and this, that, and other. He's sitting there telling me that he was, uh, you know, he didn't do it. It's, you know, we're friends and this is hip hop and everything. And I thought, yeah, you know, it, it could happen. It's hip hop, you know. I said, you know what, let me talk to them. I'll straighten it out. Everything was supposed to be settled. And Ice Cube asked Be Real to record some vocals for Caution, a group signed to Cube's Lynch Mob Records. But in the studio, there was another problem. And I heard a couple lines that were the same things I used on the Temple of Boom record. And I thought to myself, wait a minute. That's my line. How the hell is it on this record? I'm like, damn, again? In my opinion, I, I, I felt like he saw my reaction, and I walked out of the room for a second to make a phone call. When I came back, the line was gone. And I was thinking, oh, wait a minute, that line ain't there no more. Okay, I, I know I'm not tripping. So I come back and I have a talk with these guys again, Muggs and Sam. I said, hey, I think he really did take our shit. I remember Cube told me, man, these Cypress Hill niggas is tripping. I, said, I thought them was your homies. Because they was down. And he said, yeah, I thought they was my homies too, but them niggas is dissing. You know what the fuck I'm talking about? You know, me, I don't love from no channel, from nobody. You know, even though we was dogs, you know, I, I felt like they should be dealt with the, uh, the worst. Oh, yeah. It ain't over, motherfuckers. These niggas don't understand. Ice Cube, among the most influential MCs in hip-hop history was also legendarily vicious in battle. Having defended West Coast hip-hop against Common and others, Ice Cube also dismantled N.W.A. and Jerry Heller in No Vaseline. After no rest for the wicked, Ice Cube took aim at Cypress Hill with King of the Hill. King of the Hill was basically the, the diss against us with him and Mac. This nigga, so I didn't give It was a pretty good diss, you know. I, I had to give it up on that one. It was all right. Dub C, a founding member of the West Side Connection, did not participate in the counterattack. We was we was homeboys, so if you notice, Dub C ain't on that record. Dub told me that he knew them, and that's why he stayed out of it or whatever. Cause I don't give a fuck if I know you or not. That's the way I was raised, though. My daddy was a gangster, and that's how he instilled that in me. You ride with your nigga, right or wrong. Talk about and tell a nigga how wrong he was later after after the fact. But if it's going down, nigga, you gotta ride with him. Fuck everybody really ain't ain't really who in our way. About that shit. What's the say some about sin dog? 
Ben even had a conversation with Q and said, Q, man, I remember no Vaseline. I ain't got nothing to do with this shit. And we still went on him because that's how gangster it was at the time. And we didn't know was, was that a setup or, or what? So we just covered all bases. Fuck Sin Dog too. After it came out, I had the lyrics sent to me from <laughs> unknown sources. The day after it came out, B just took their beat and killed them on it. We basically did what, what Cube had been known to do other people, you know, uh, which is jack their beats and just diss the shit out of them over it, you know? Give me that beat! Give me that beat, bitch! We are at war! We, we had one of our boys named LC come on the track, and he sounded like a uh, Cube did when he was with N.W.A. Damn, dang, motherfucker! It's round two! I got my lunch and my dinner, boo! You think we gonna bow down to some punk-ass niggas? We from the evil side, boy! So it kind of sounds like Cube is dissing himself, you know, like a, a mirror. <laughs> He's looking in the mirror dissing himself. Ice Cube, you's an actor, not a motherfucking killer! My neighborhood you from, what don't you ever done? When the shit goes down, you the first one to run! Every time you talk, got a mouth full of time, I only miss and you done! Ice Cube Killer, we didn't sell it or nothing, we just put it out in the streets, we pressed up like a thousand copies, sent them to all the DJs. I thought that shit was whack. That shit wasn't, couldn't fuck with King of the Hill. They dissed me at a at the LA Sports Arena car show, you know, with like 40,000 people there, you know. And then I did some shit in the Bronx on a Rap Sheets pay-per-view where I had his shirt crossed out with a big red X. Fans and artists began to take sides. The shit got pretty deep, you know. I had people from his side coming to me, you know, like, hey man, you know. It wasn't right what he did and blah, 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 and this and that. And pretty soon Cam and Solo came to me. LA artists Cam and Solo were also in the middle of a business feud with Ice Cube. Meeting Solo at a Los Angeles traffic light, Ice Cube started a fight. Knocked him down, knocked him out, woke him back up, whooped on his ass. Somehow his chain fell in my hand. I don't know how I got in my hand, but it fell in my hand. Then all of a sudden his Rolex start jumping off and coming into my hand. I don't know how that happened. I guess Solo knocked out Cube and took his West Side Connection chain. Solo, sporting Ice Cube's chain, showed up at a Cypress Hill show at the House of Blues in L.A. Be real, put it on and hold it all up into the crowd. Crowd go crazy. They go bananas off of it. And we're like, well, shit, let's take pictures with it. <laughs> nigga, you didn't take the chain. Nigga, why you wearing it? What that? What, what you proving, nigga? How many brownie points you getting for that, nigga? You didn't take it. That's the way I felt at the time. It was a pretty interesting time because, you know, it created a lot of a uh, split here in L.A. between black and brown, you know. Concern began to grow that the beef might pit neighborhoods, gangs, and races against each other. It can happen at any minute. It can ignite. A lot of the, the Latin people were like, hey man, you know, we're gonna ride for you on this one. You just say the word. They would not want to see Cypress Hill in LA. They get ran the fuck out of LA. Dead up, the SAs rule the streets in LA. Amidst the violent death of Tupac Shakur and rumors that the Mexican mafia was getting involved, cooler heads managed to prevail and the conflict never boiled over. Somebody gave me B-Real number and said B-Real wanna holler at you. He asked me, you know, so, What's it gonna take for you and Cube to, to squash this? I said, you know, just like you, all he's gotta do is call me and you know, we'll talk it out. And I explained to him where I was coming from. Nigga, I don't got nothing to do with it, but that's my homeboy and I'm riding with him. He said, you know what, homie? I can respect that. I can't even be mad at you. I respect that. 
If that's where you coming from with it, Mac, I respect you. Q called me like on, uh, I think it was January 1st in 97. Like, you know, hey, what's going on, man? Let's talk this thing out, you know? And so I said, yeah, all right. Before we talk this out, this is why I did what I did, because I want you to really know that, they, you know, this ain't for nothing. The shit we've been talking is pretty heavy, so we can go on, keep doing this, and sooner or later we'll run into each other. You know, it's a small world, you know. If you want to squash it right now, we can squash it. I'll never say any fucked up thing about you as long as you stick to that too, and, and we'll be friends again, and maybe shit, we'll work together and do something. If we see Be Real right now, he can come hang with us right now, man. It's cool. For real. Because we got past the shit. I like Ice Cube Chef. I'm a big fan. I was bumping it today, I'm telling you. It's in my CD thing right now. Definitely, there's no there's no beef whatsoever. I mean, when when I squashed it with him and I, I you know, I said my piece, that was it. You know, Mac 10 too, you know. Be Real and Ice Cube have worked together since. And while their friendship has never returned to what it was, the beef should be remembered as an instance of a business dealing between artists, almost escalating into citywide violence. It should also be remembered as an example of how two sides can come together to settle a dangerous situation.